All right, so I am finishing up the um, Kahoot that we were working on for 1B1, 1B2. We had just done this pen problem, so I'm going to just advance to the next problem. So it was another pen one, so we're just going to talk through it together just to make sure we all understand how to do the problem. So we've got this problem right here, 0 0.078 times 10 to the 6. We want it to be in proper scientific notation. Remember, that means we want one digit, one through nine, in front of our decimal place. Right now we have a zero in front of it, so that's not going to work. So I need to move this two places to the right and make it 7.8. And remember, our rule called Lars said if you move left, you add to your exponent. If you move right, we subtract. So we moved two places to the right, so we're going to subtract two from our exponent. So this would be 7.8 times 10 to the fourth. It is this second choice right here. Okay, so let's move on to our next one. And again, it's just going to keep showing your score not changing because we I'm doing it as myself instead of us doing it together in class. We have another pen problem. So let's choose the proper scientific notation. Let's look at what this one says. So we've got 83.2 times 10 to the negative four. So I need to move my decimal one place to the left to make it 8.32. And when you move to the left, remember Lars tells us we add the number of moves we made to our exponent. So we're gonna be adding one to a negative four. So this is gonna be 8.32 and be careful. When you add a positive and a negative, remember on your calculator, you should check this, it's actually subtracting the value between them and then keeping the sign of the larger. So it ends up being 8.32 times 10 to the negative three. So it is that choice. Okay, let's move on to our next one. So we have one more of this type, I believe. So when I look at this one, it is 0 0.07 times 10 to the negative eight. So we need that seven to be the digit that's in front of our decimal place. So I'm gonna move two places to the right to make that happen. When we move to the right, we subtract the number of moves we made to our power. So negative eight minus two more is negative 10. And then this would just be seven since the zeros would not count once we've moved that decimal. So seven times 10 to the negative 10. That would be this choice. Just seems to be coincidence that I chose the second spot on a lot of those. Um, so let's move on to our next piece. Sorry, it's glitching on me a little bit. Okay. All right, so let's talk about doing an actual problem instead of just fixing something that's already there. So you can do calculations without putting them in the proper scientific notation first. Make sure that you read the directions to see if the final answer should be in scientific notation or standard form. So we did talk about that in class. Complete the multiplication, your answer needs to be in scientific notation. So anytime they say in scientific notation, they mean proper scientific notation. So notice this is like the ones we did before. I do want to point out that this times is hidden here. It's not dividing. They'd have to put a divide symbol. If you don't see anything between two parentheses, it is understood that that is multiplying, okay? So 3.8 times 3.5 times 10, and then we would be adding our exponents since we were multiplying. So it'd be four plus seven. So I get 13.3 times 10 to the 11th. That is not proper scientific notation. 13.3 should have been a 1.33. We need the decimal to be right after that first digit. This requires moving the original decimal one place to the left. So because of Lars, which is our rule for that, if we move left, we add. If we move right, we subtract the number of moves of that power. So 13.3, notice it would move one place to the left to become 1.33 which means we add one to our power, which makes it 1.33 times 10 to the 12th. Okay, so let's do one together. Okay, so I'm gonna use my calculator and I'm doing this off to the side. I don't know if it's still sharing my calculator for you, but I'll write down my answer. Get 7.2 times 8.3. That's 59.76, so I'm gonna write that right here. And then I'm doing 10 to the second times 10 to the negative six. We add our powers, so 10 to the two plus a negative six is times 10 
to the negative four. Let me type that on your calculator. That is not proper scientific notation. So if I chose that option down here, it would be wrong. We need to move our decimal one place to the left, which means add one to the power. So it should be this uh, circle or yellowy one, 5.976 times 10 to the negative three. So that is the correct answer for that one. Okay, and then let's do another one. This one is dividing. And then again, they did ask us this time, so it doesn't round, it doesn't uh, divide nicely because they said round your final answer to the nearest hundredth. Don't do that until the very, very end because you need to make sure you've adjusted the decimals and stuff first. So I'm going to write out more than I need to on the, the decimal part. So 4.31 uh, times, oh, that's supposed to be divide, I think. Sorry, it did not have the divide button. Let me add that in there because this did say divide. Um, and then divided by 6.21. So let me see what I got for that. That is zero point, I'm going to write this out to maybe six or seven decimal places. 0 0.69404186, blah, blah, blah. And then when we divide, because that's what this is supposed to have been, sorry for that typo, um, we subtract the power. So 11 minus a negative three is actually 11 plus three. So that's going to be times 10 to the 14th. So that's where we're at right now. Unfortunately, though, this is not proper scientific notation. I need that six to be in front of the decimal point. Moving to the right, one position subtracts one from your power. And then you can round it to the nearest hundredth. So 6.9, the four is in the hundredth place. There is a zero behind it. So it's going to stay a four and then times 10 to the 13. So that is this red triangle option. Sorry, that one took me almost the whole time. <laughs> um, Okay, so let's move on to our next piece. True or false, 210 million in scientific notation would be 21 times 10 to the seventh. Now they said in scientific notation, so that means it has to be proper scientific notation. So that is not correct. I already know it's false, but let's see what it should have been. So 210 times million, remember we learned is 10 to the sixth, that's the original. The decimal point is currently here. We need one digit in front of the decimal. So we should be moving that to the left two places, which means we add two to our power. So this is false. It should have been 2.1 times 10 to the eighth. So you would have chosen false here based on what they gave you. Um, this would have been a true if they'd given us 2.1 times 10 to the eighth. So let's move to the next. Okay. So this gets us into 1B2. This is just a practice in proportions. We're going to be, and I'm going to do four of these with us, and then we're going to do look at the ones that I had on the Kahoot. Um, these are setting up a fraction equal to a fraction, and then we're going to use a fun technique to solve that called cross-multiplying. So you have to set up equivalent ratios. Like this first problem is about tree shadows and a boy's height. So if we're going to be comparing these, we have to put the tree shadow and the boy's height and the boy's shadow. We have to kind of compare those to similar places on the fractions. So essentially, you're going to think about having the boy and having the tree. That's going to be two separate columns, two separate fractions. We'll have the actual height and we'll have the shadow. That'll be our numerator and our denominator. Now, if you put tree first and boy second, or if you put boy and tree in the rows, that's fine as long as you have a spot for each thing that we're talking about, okay? So a tree's shadow is 38 feet. So the tree's shadow, that's this bottom part, tree column shadow denominator is 38 feet. The boy cast a nine foot shadow. So notice that's the boy's shadow. So that's gonna go right there. If the boy is 5.5 feet tall, so that's the boy's actual height, how tall is the tree? So we don't know the actual height of the tree. So notice, boy, everything about the boy is in this first fraction. Everything about the tree is in my second fraction. The heights of each thing is in the row on the top, the numerators. So notice, I don't know the tree's height, so I'm calling it X. The shadows of both options are in the bottom, okay? So if you put shadows on top and heights on the bottom, that's fine. 
as long as you have everything labeled correctly. So then we cross multiply. Cross multiply means you multiply the diagonals and set them equal. So we would be doing 5.5 .5 times 38 equals nine times X. So then we wanna work that out. So we wanna do 5.5 .5 times 38, which is 209. And nine times X is just nine X. We divide to get the X by itself because we're trying to find the height of the tree. And they did tell us to round to the nearest tenth. You always have to look at your directions. So 209 divided by nine, that is 23. Let me actually make sure I'm sharing a full screen so you can see my calculator on this one. Um, that'd be 23.2 repeating forever. So, oops, and of course that erases all my ink. I love that. Um, so we had uh, 209 equals the nine X. We divided both sides by nine, and that gave me, this is approximately 23.2. The nearest tenth would be one decimal place, and the two behind it does not bump it up, and that would be feet. So that tree is about 23.2 feet tall. Okay, so let's do another one. I'm going to try to keep my calculator on the same screen over here to the side so I don't have to lose my ink again. All right, when a pediatrician prescribes uh, Tylenol, that's what that is, to children, they prescribe five milliliters for every 25 pounds of the child's weight. If Zoe weighs 800 pounds, so that LB is pounds, not 801, um, how many milliliters of the Tylenol acetaminophen will her doctor prescribe? Okay, so we have a prescription that they use and we have Zoe, an actual person. We know that they're gonna talk about milliliters and pounds as the two measurements they gave us. So the prescription is that they give five milliliters for every 25 pounds someone that's a child weighs. We, we don't know how much they're giving Zoe. That's what we're looking for. We know Zoe weighs 80 pounds. So we're going to cross multiply. So five times 80, I believe is 400. And then 25 times X is 25 X. We'll divide both sides by 25. And that's going to equal 16 milliliters. So that's how much medicine Zoe's going to get. Okay, now I have Josiah went to Mexico for spring break and he changed $325 into Mexican pesos. Um, at that time, the exchange rate was one US dollar was equal to 12.54 uh, Mexican pesos. How many did he get for his trip? The pesos. Okay, so we actually have what we call the exchange rate. I'm just going to call that the ER. And then we have Josiah, who's actually going on his trip. And we know we have two types of money. We have dollars and we have pesos. Okay, so those are our things. So the exchange rate said that 325, um, sorry, the exchange rate was one US dollar is 12.54 pesos. That's the exchange rate. Josiah has 325 US dollars. Make sure you put that in the right spot. So that's on top since that's where my $1 was. And then we're solving how many pesos he got. So let me pull my calculator over for this one. Um, so we're doing 325. That's the two numbers I know times the 12.54. I always do the diagonal where I have two numbers first because that's easier. That's 4,075.5. Equal to 1x. So you don't even need to divide. He would get 4,075.5 pesos. Now, they didn't tell me to round, so I'm going to leave it like this. But if they told you to round, um, you know, in Newton, they'd probably say round to the nearest peso, um, which would be 4,076. So just make sure you look for the directions on the rounding. And then the last one we're going to do together before we would have had the Kahoot question is a 16 ounce caramel macchiato has 230 calories. How many calories are there in a 24 ounce? So we have the 16 ounce has 230 calories. So this is ounces to calories. We're going to buy a 24 ounce one and we want to know how many calories that is. So we're going to do our 230. I always, like I said, I do the diagonal that has the both numbers in it first. So that's 5,520 equal to the 16x, because that's the other diagonal. We divide both sides by 16. 
So divide by 16. And that is 345 calories for that 24 ounce one. Okay, and again, remember all of this ink will be a little bit cleaner and nicely put into the PDF that I'm gonna post. Um, okay, so let's move on to our example to do together. And it just said type in a numerical answer. Normally, like I said, uh, Newton does not have you put in units for some of these, so. Um, 12 ounce lemon ice drink is advertised for having only 160 calories. So that's just like the one we just did. So if we think ounces over calories, how many ounces could Sally drink if she wanted to drink only 100 calories of that drink? So we do 12 times 100, which is 1200 equals 160 X. Divide by the 160. We'll want to get our calculator out, which I'm not going to do that because it'll clear off the screen real quick. Um, but 1200 divided by 160 is 7.5. So 7.5 ounces of that drink. And again, you would have only typed it in the 7.5 because that's kind of how they have you do it on the homework. But I did have the option for, I believe, it to count that right as well if you had typed in the words. I know no one answered the question. <laughs> All right. Um, I answered the question, but it was 7.5. So let's do the next one. I said, Sue's paycheck is $1,040 for 40 hours of work. If she works 30 hours next week, what will her paycheck be? So this is just a ratio of her, how much she makes. So this week versus next, we have money per hours. So $1,040 for working 40 hours. Next week, we don't know how much money she's gonna make, but we know she's gonna work a little less. She's gonna work 30 hours. So you do the 1,040 times the 30, and that gives you 31,200. 40 times X would be 40 X. We're gonna divide to get X by itself. So we can solve for that paycheck. And it looks like her paycheck would only be $780. And again, you would type that in as just 780 since they said only the numerical part. Um, okay. So let's see, I think that gets us to our last slide. And then we're done with this part, which is just one last example. Uh, ben needs to convert 500 US dollars to Japanese yen. One American dollar is worth 123.3 yen. Um, so that's the exchange rate. They tell you how much money it converts to. So if you think about that as exchange rate and we have dollars over yen, so that'd be $1 is 123.3 yen. We know that Ben is the person who's doing his conversion. He has 500 US dollars, which goes in the top, just like the $1. We want to know how many yens he's going to get. So that'd be 500 times 123.3. That's 61,650. Uh, so 61,650. And that equals 1x. So if you divide by 1, you're going to get the same thing. So 61,650 yen. That would be what he has. All right. And I believe that should be the end of the 1B2 notes. So that should be everything you need for doing those two homeworks. We will start next class with 1B3. I will be moving that homework and quiz two um, to match up kind of with some of the 2A week material notes. So um, I will see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend.